recording. Okay, welcome to our next meeting of the development team. So it's February 20th. Time's ticking as we move along here. So let's look at the agenda for today. Um, we're going to look at the critical path, um, digester, roadmap, um, critical path roadmap. update on uh, D3D PVC pipe frames and continuing development on a 3D printer and other things, the digester being one of them. And um, that's that. Okay, so here's the agenda. So looking at the first picture here, uh, we're moving along on the hours here, the, the weekly total been a little lower this week than than before uh, slight downturn about about a hundred twenty or so hours uh, but we're moving along uh, my goal on the the recruiting aspect is that we really kick in with much more effort as as uh, I'm working on a book and publishing that and, and really taking this as an opportunity uh, to regroup and reorganize about after a decade of involvement with the Global Village construction set and really kind of like taking it to the next level, kind of summarizing all our learnings and taking a, a nice big ups, upsurge in development as we really get this stuff to work and with the experience that we have. So let's look at uh, start by looking at the critical path and, and discuss some of the goals for this year, how we're doing. Um, some of the main topics are the training programs, which, as I say, is, is the way to replicate, to, to get people to do this as a full-time job, is essentially a critical aspect of growing the project. Um, let's see. Let me, let me share my screen so everybody sees where I'm looking at here so I can point to some things. Training people is still, that, that remains the critical aspect that we need to be doing in order to multiply this project. Uh, that's currently the mental model of how this can, this can rise to, to more prominence. It's essentially, if we're trying to create the open source economy, people have to be doing that for their life, for their livelihood. So preparation on uh, training revolves around the house, uh, I think house house building and 3D printing or the micro factory concepts are very big, big topics. By that we address uh, critical needs. Housing is the number one cost in people's lives. Then it's followed by food, I believe. And uh, how do we address that? Well, we, we work on housing directly through the Open Building Institute. Uh, that's on that Katarina's working on documentation and we're looking at starting the uh, immersion training looks like next year like this year we'll, we'll do a couple of house builds but but as far as training on that it's probably next year that that's going to happen on th the 3d printing open source micro factory topics um, plan is still September the big immersion month of training so how are we doing on that we are working on um, um, several things there, the filament maker, further further development on the 3D printer, the new extruder. So on the new extruder, um, you know, John, you're going to be building your 3D printer and Ruslan is also looking at building his. Um, but um, right now we probably want to go with two routes. One is the, well, like you were thinking, a very simple, simple extruder like the Prusa extruder as one way to go. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And then as we talked about let me see. Uh, make sure you guys are muted there. As we talked about uh, last week we talked about some of the extruders that are available uh, for replication. Right now essentially the MK2 uh, sorry, MKA, the, the standard extruder that we used on, uh, on our 3D printer. We need to upgrade that. Um, we want to do the simple Prusa extruder. So that's a design that we have to simply implement. And we've got um, the design pretty much open sourced and ready to build the Prusa i3 MK2. 
um, that's what we want to go with. Because last week we ran into um, now Roberto. He's actually taking a little vacation. He says he's got some issues, but um, he said that we we're talking about the different options. Uh, there's the all metal extruder that the Lulzbot 3D printers are using or migrating to. Yes, that's a good option. We want to have a, an extruder that's a robust one that prints with rubber and plastics and all temperatures, uh, three millimeter and 1.75 millimeter. That means it must be a three millimeter extruder. Uh, so that's the that's the that's the end goal. We don't know where which one we're going to end up with. We might have to design something that's a hybrid. Uh, the aero extruder is one one of those that we were looking at last time but the price on that is like a hundred fifty dollars for that so we have to probably want to do a little better on the price i mean just um uh, just a hundred fifty dollars just for the extruder it sounds a little expensive but it's something that we still need to work out uh, but definitely as an interim solution we can say that the prusa i3 mk2 is an interim solution i mean it does not do well on rubber because you need three millimeter on rubber and you need you need a special special design that that has a short distance like basically so the rub the filament doesn't bend it has to be designed a little different way um, the prusa i3 mk2 is not going to do that it can print high temperature but it's only 1.75 millimeter filament does not do well on rubber but it's a good solid entry level low cost extruder that we can do so that's something you know a few bucks i mean not a lot of money just basic stepper motor and some plastic parts some s small metal parts that that will do it for now and then we get gonna have to think about scratch our head a little more whether we design the high performance high temperature three millimeter rubber and normal filament capable uh, kind of an extruder for larger printing so that's that still remains to be seen um, uh, but in the meantime, as John, I know you're going to be working on the design of the three, the new design. Yeah, we can include the Prusa i3 MK2, uh, get a perfect design for the PVC frame version of the of the 3D printer. Okay, as far as the filament maker, um, we are looking at negotiating how we can put that into this year's program. Uh, like the there's the Eugene workshop coming up that's uh, let's see let me uh, yeah the Eugene workshop about June Seattle I mean that's that workshop in Seattle like July that's unknown like we were thinking about building out the extruder as far as the documentation on that Matt Rogie is working on the Thunderhead filament extruder the really good one that we want to replicate he's a little behind schedule we have to work out what that's going to look like in terms of schedule so we don't know on, about that but um, uh, definitely want to make it work and, and put some energy behind it because the filament maker is just so important so definitely want to uh, work on that so, um, yeah as far as uh, report from the home front here I worked on an enclosure for the biodigester so that's you can see the video how that's built but starting with the enclosure for the biodigester moving along that's part of the house package and an important utility for the CD home which we would replicate when we do the builds this year we'll probably build more of these digesters to see how they work in practice um, replicating them and, and seeing them built as a standard feature so you can take a look at that now outside of the digester just the one main thing that's left there on the cd eco home as far as the utilities we've got everything done the water purification needs to be finished there still so that means uh, an ozonator added to the existing purification systems that'll be like one of the last features before just about all the utility systems are completed for the cd eco home that's but that's before like if you look at the the critical path here that's before the like right after that so i'm working on that here i need to do that before i do the shakedown on a cnc torch table so basically moving on to this uh, cnc torch table um, it's also good to note that we are making good progress on the cnc circuit mill if you look at the osc workshops facebook page i'll paste that in here i'm pulling that up 
Um, Shane did get back to the circuit mill with a vengeance. He's, he's doing well on it. Definite good progress. Uh, let's see what's the yeah like here's some of the some of the latest latest updates but yeah he's he's moving forward on that um, you can look at the fe February 15 link where he's doing some more cuts but yeah he's refining some just uh, shaking up shaking down the circuit mill to make it fully usable for making s circuits of various types that, that is an important tool it's basically the identical to this d3d 3d printer except it's got a, a router head and because the our printer is designed to be so modular and it's a very strong frame now that would require the metal frame that wouldn't work with the pvc frame um, unless you really beefed it up so our same d3d platform can produce the circuit mill which nobody really does i don't know of any any uh, 3d printer that's reliable both for 3d printing and making making circuits so that's that's pretty good i'm going to just paste that into the working document uh, progress on cnc circuit mill is definitely happening Which is good, because because in, in terms of the immersion that uh, program for the the September, we want to build out a basic micro factory package of the 3D printer, circuit mill, uh, torch table, filament maker, and that's why I, I was mentioning the filament maker. Um, we really want to put some energy behind that to make it happen because it's such an essential tool, and we can make 3D printing filament. Could sell that. I was looking into bioplastics these days. Uh, between uh, cellulose acetate and PLA, it looks like PLA is actually, yeah, actually, uh, I should just mention that. Uh, one more thing, so, so, circuit mill definitely is making progress. Um, as far as bioplastics, like for the, for the filament maker, imagine the tool chain of making your own bioplastics in addition to extruding filament and making parts. I mean, that sounds i mean it's pretty exotic right but i think it's quite close and in fact if you look at our wiki we do have very decent documentation back a few years ago eric polliner did some good work on if you look at pla for example on a wiki uh, we pretty much have a recipe for uh, a bioreactor that would make pla from sugar polylactic acid is made from sugar by by bacteria munching up sugar to make lactic acid then lactic acid is polymerized to make PLA which is the most common 3d printing filament so people it does look pretty promising for uh, PLA from sugar or cellulose acetate which is also which is uh, transparent thermoplastic it's used, been used in glass for airplanes like in the 40s um, I think it's a good plastic but also very very simple once you take wood you treat it with glacial acetic acid which is concentrated like like vinegar essentially you can say concentrated vinegar but then it turns it it, it breaks the bonds and makes these cellophane not cellophane it's cellulose acetate uh, the acetate comes from the glacial acetic acid so basically you break it you munch up the cellulose and put some acetate ends on it and that's a clear bioplastic so that there's high potential there and also in addition to there's starch bioplastics but but starches tend to they do make starch 3d printing filament from like potatoes uh, and that's also a very easy way to do you take starch and what do you do to it you put some uh, what do you do to starch I forget is it um, What was it? It's, it's actually very simple. It's uh, I forget the, the exact deal there. But once again, common chemicals do you know you can mix it up in a test tube like a, or in, in your kitchen, um, and they do make starch filament. So that's potentially uh, another way to go. But I, I, so I was working on a on a book, the bioplastic extruder. 
and I was thinking about, well, what are all the practical plastics that we can make? And definitely PLA is one, cellophane acetate, which is glazing material, another bioplastic, and starch-based bioplastics, all very, very feasible. So that would be very interesting, you know, once again, showing the whole ecology. You can start with a chainsaw, rev it up, and you got a tree, and then you go to plastic that you can 3D print. <laughs> Uh, those kinds of ecologies from local materials are powerful. Um, wood being a very promising substance, you can make charcoal from wood. And charcoal, or which is carbon, pure carbon, has all the chemistry that you have in petroleum. That's why wood is so important for the net, for the renewable energy economy. Um, you can make, by, by producing, like in a gasifier, we make carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We burn that in gasifier engines. Well, you can... From that, you can synthesize al alkanes, the long-chain hydrocarbons, by what's known as the Fischer-Tropsch synthesis. That's a thing that's also quite doable from wood to replace all the chemistry from uh, petroleum and oil, oil and coal with wood. So it's something that also, I would say, falls within a, like the level one of GVCS, where it's relatively simple. It's just temperature and pressure to make your petroleum products out of charcoal on a local scale. So it's just a thought there. Um, okay. John, are you doing okay on the notes? I, I think it seems like something disappeared there. Yeah, they just, uh, they got deleted the whole amount of, yeah. Oh, did they? The How yeah, about I had a whole section of notes just got deleted, like, <laughs> Oh, uh, by who? Uh, I think the badger might ate him. <laughs> um, not sure who. <laughs> let's see. Really? When did it happen? Just uh, did I do that? Around, yeah, like fifteen uh, seconds ago. Uh, yeah, I lost I, it. No, I think that was my fault. I thought those were the old notes. Okay, then. Oh, sorry, man. Then yeah. What you gotta do is Let me click. Edit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta control Z it. So, uh, thanks, man. Oh, there you Look, go. It's back. Okay, we got it back. Yeah, careful about that. Um, like, yeah, just like A by erased a lot of your slide, but I guess it's. Yeah, no, just uh, be careful. See what's what's new and what's not. Okay. Um, so cool stuff. Um, let's see. What else to be said on my side? Yeah, I'm, every day basically I'm spending like four hours on a book just researching and, and doing that. I, I think it is very important. It's kind of putting all the thoughts together and and everything else. So, okay, let's, let's keep moving on here. So, um, let's see. So we've got Abe and John. Um, and Ruslan. Okay. Um, let's move on to the slide number six, or, yeah, I just moved it. Slide number six, let's move on to the PVC pipe macro testing. Um, let's do a little test. Is that, so, so Ruslan, can you update us where you are? Because I was actually thinking that we might, uh, based on what you have, actually try that. Possibly in a meeting. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, um... I recently moved all, all the macros to a uh, um, dedicated workbench, OC piping workbench. And uh, if you um, go to corresponding link on, on the slide, the second one. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, yeah, just, very uh, cool. Ah, uh, wait. Uh, That's super cool, man. Wow. Um, Did you already put those icons in? Where'd you get those icons? Draw them. Oh, wow. Very wow. cool. My own. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Very nice. Wait, I, uh, <laughs> I, I put uh, low, low resolution uh, icons in the first one. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. No, that's awesome there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, because we, you are aware that we have also other icons that Jean Baptiste made. Do you know that? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay. For, for, for piping? No, it's I for don't. a 3D printer in general. Um, um, no, no, but, but uh, okay, can you give me a link? Yeah, so. So, Jean Baptiste Log, he's our graphics lead guy. He's working in the background on his on his work log. Um, Okay, I need to search on the wiki for, um, oh yeah, so there's a, let's see, is it icons? No. Um, Are you thinking of the fab tool icons, or are you talking about some specific to D3D? No, actually, actually for specific to D3D, we have a, a few icons that Jean Baptiste made, and uh, let's see. Okay, fix the instructions. Uh, it was D3D part um, library. Okay. Path to um, G repository. Okay. Um, what did I do? Multitasking here. Um, okay, you see. Uh, you need to, go to follow the instruction here. Okay. Um, I posted it uh, to the chat and also simultaneously uh, on the uh, slide 6 second link there are some comments I hope they are working uh, with how to clone corresponding uh, files to uh, free cut uh, work page directory I'll be, your, I'll be your guinea pig this week on a try to render the pipe <laughs> base printer yeah yeah very nice um state and um, basically all, all the macros you, you can now access uh, just uh, uh, clicking on, on the buttons and then I, I, I'm going uh, I already started to uh, integrate some uh, some parts into uh, 3, 3d printer uh, uh, from Steven okay um, so we can uh, reuse code okay um, oh. Hold on, I'm still looking for those icons. I just want to pull them up. Okay, yeah, it might be that Yeah, if you look at my screen here, look at this. This is what we have like um I mean, it's in my email. I'm not sure this even got on a wiki. Okay. But we do have a few icons like power supply, like plugs and axes and spool, controller, frame. So so we do have a bunch of that. Um, maybe I can just paste that into the document and make sure we capture. Hey guys, I posted a link into chat. Uh, did you find it on the wiki? That was like the main 
Pattern language icons. Um, yeah. Oh, is that... Right, and where is that actual wiki page? And the, yes, that's the that's the article on that. What's the actual wiki page that technology pattern language icons? No, it's that's not that one. For my icons, I, I took. Uh, uh, Original icon from Art War page from a free cat and followed uh, somehow a little bit uh, design guides. Cat has uh, its own design guides and then modified uh, or, or, or tried to mimic the, um, the original free cat icons. Okay, um, let's see. So, what state altogether is the workbench in right now? Can you actually use it? Oh, uh, yes. You can create pipes, coupling, uh, bushings, uh, elbows, mm -hmm. uh, teeth, wow. corners, and crosses. And then, to to make the frame, we assemble that together. Are you working on uh, making that automatic or? My goal is uh, to do it automatically. Uh, Steven already started this, yeah. and uh, I will I will migrate um, my previous code for frame mm -hmm. uh, to this work to his work page. I already started and already uh, migrate the uh, non GUI part there. Okay. To maybe this week. Uh, oh, did he actually? Uh, contribute more to that right now or are you talking about his prior work um, what do you mean no I mean uh, when you said you're building upon Steven Steven's work are you talking about that he did some work just recently or is this from a few months ago uh, I took the recent uh, version uh, from him oh, okay okay so he he did some more on that. That's good. That's good. Um, and uh, I also uh, tried to contact uh, the developer, developer from uh, uh, of uh, Flamingo uh -huh. Workbench, but uh, I'm still waiting for response. Uh huh. Right. Uh, did you find anything more regarding Flamingo? Whether that's that's being actively developed or like it looks or or no news since last time. I, I, I think it is develop, uh, developed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. That's pretty good. Okay. So, assignment for anyone who wants to test this. Yeah, I'll take a look at that and uh, we should test this uh, to see how, how well we can do. Uh, and I hope it will work not only on my mission. Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense for me to give them a try this week because I will be uh, rendering out the PVC D3. So yeah, definitely. I have a task for the week. Uh, one note yep. about it: uh, the um, the test parts which you will uh, found when you install this workbench, uh, they are only for test purpose. They are not not real parts. And the real parts are stored in, uh, in a different repository. Okay. Uh, I I'm not sure about licensing. That's why I just store them uh, without license in a separate repository. Okay. You, you need to copy and replace them. Uh huh. So these are what like just um, did you create a different set? Like explain that. Like how come you didn't use the what you have already? Um, and there is 
was built uh, with eight tables, and uh, obviously it uh, contains tables, commercial mm -hmm. separated various tables, with uh, test uh, with test parts. And uh, then you can have a put link to to the slide. Um, from me was e piping library data and uh, there you can find uh, different tables and you just okay. move them to corresponding directory and replace the, the test files okay okay so you just um, and why did you use test files because it was just simpler to implement using test files particular uh, sizes which I can optically better distinguish for example three centimeter two centimeter and when I test the macros I can see what went wrong okay uh, easily okay okay and uh, the another reason uh, because uh, those uh, values are basically invented by me I yeah. don't need to think about licensing okay okay and the whole project with then um, LGPL Okay. I, I'm not sure. What about uh, if I will find uh, some data online, which I do publicly available? Yeah, I mean, and, uh, type it in a in a table. What is the license of, of this table? Well, if the data is an open standard, it's it's uh, it's open. Uh, okay, and this is is not a problem. I don't think so. That's why the, the only uh, real data there is for pipe. It's like yeah. No, I mean, as far as I know, I mean, that if these are industry standards, th those are published standards, so that's all open information. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, so, I, I can speak this stuff, like, you know, from engineering and doing pipe layouts and stuff over here. Um, uh huh. As an engineer, and it, that's all free use. Any ISO or ASM, the uh, standard uh, stuff, which PVC pipe would fall under a national piping standard, is uh, free use. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have no issue with it, this data, then I will make a remark um, that uh, pipe uh, I'm talking about uh, other parts uh, like uh, elbows, cross, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. which, which uh, seems not to be st standardized. But, uh, really? Uh, it, sh it should be. Lots of, lots of the um, you know, PVC primitives are um, national uh, piping standard, I believe. Oh, right. yeah. You can look into that, but we should be fine here. Um, for example, elbows. I took it from. Uh, I have sources there. Some right, but if the company is following open standards, then you're fine, right? Uh, yeah, just just speak from engineering basis. Um, so let me, I just put up something that I can use for reference here real quick. Um, the, these primitive uh, PVC parts you guys are using are covered under AS, ANSI or ASTM standard. Um, there's 
they're used for just you know co-compliance and uh, certification and all the rest. So it's it's a standard product that all these different manufacturers manufacture to that design, to that standard, to that certified uh, primitive. So you're fine uh, taking and rendering any of these uh, standard components. Um, yeah. So I, 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 there should be no issue here. Also, elbows, because not um, not uh, all dimensions are standard designs. Maybe there are some some range, uh, minimum uh, minimum thickness, something like this. But uh, all the dimensions you you will find, uh, for example, uh, elbow or cross, are standardized. But, but the, if you think they are okay, then I can um, put to them. There's still some problems because I I also have some data which is uh, sorted by manufacturer, and you can look into my repository. And there are two directories: Etna Plastics and Formufit, for example. Another thing is just, uh, you know, another thing to tell you is just that public CAD models, uh, you know, for instance, you look at, um, you know, digitikey.com, you look at uh, uh, SMD design or circuit board layout. Uh, companies are thrilled when uh, people take it upon themselves to design a, uh, so say for Eagle, a CAD layout, and you design a new CAD rendering of their product. They're fine with that because it actually helps with their resellability and lots of, you know, those things even for, uh, patented you know, layouts and design of mechanical devices. I mean, they love that because then, and then it helps the mechanical engineer render it more quickly in the design phase. And, you know, these also being, you know, standard, standards-based components for the good spot here. So not too much of a worry, but always, always good to, you know, be thinking about that, but should be no worry here. Okay. And then what is the license of the data? No license? Uh, effectively, yes. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a standards, a standard uh, component. Like, um, for instance, you take like a piece of angled steel. Um, you know, just, uh, just, just uh, excuse me, I, I didn't explain this properly. So I have a, a project, uh, this uh, uh, piping workbench, and uh, this project is entirely under LGBL um, license. Yeah. Public yeah, I think, I think that's that's the way to go because then whatever is the open standards like ANSI or ASTM that are included in your work, your work really just, the LGPL really covers the greater body. If whatever is inside there is open, I think uh, the LGPL refers to your work really because the other stuff is like you're you're ignoring it in some way. Is that? Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, my, uh, yeah, that's correct. They're assumed. I mean, that, that's the way to view it. Yep. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Then I maybe I will put these files and maybe make some. Uh, the thing is, I, I understand the the engineering loading. Yeah. People making the laws, they their logic is a different one, or could be a different one. Um, and I don't want to have troubles. Okay. Hey guys, I can I can pipe in a little bit. Um, the, basically, it's whatever the license says. So if you got it and there was no license, then then you know you're not agreeing to anything, right? Um, I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to. So if, so you find out what the license is of the stuff you're getting, and what it says in that license, and then that's what you go with. And then you include that license along with whatever your code is. I mean, because there's lots of open source projects that have multiple licenses in them because they took code from some other project. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. Well, it, it's um, it, it's not that easy. It also depends on, on the country. Well, for example, uh, considering lit literature, I think in Europe, generally, and also maybe Great Britain. I just need to put my uh, uh, author name, and I uh, we need to, to write copyright, uh, or write reserve or something like 
this it automatically uh, belongs to the auto and it's not, not that easy and not uh, you know, at least for the literature or a similar stuff and that's why I'm Okay, it, it makes sense for what uh, you told me. Thank you mm -hmm. for the information. I would, uh, I will try to improve the current situation that we uh, have uh, faster access to real data. Maybe I just put some notice there. And, uh, yeah, we, we will see. Um, I, I have another question. Yeah. About PVC, uh, PVC pipes, so you you mentioned that uh, there is uh, some problem with PVC three uh, D printing printer. Uh, to just uh, if he's talking for a um, you know CNC milling application or a you know as you require larger torques and axes, it wouldn't just be a uh, only the torque and axis would be or force and axis would be the print head. So you're actually grinding into a part. Um, that's all. I mean, it's not rigid enough, really, for the application unless you, know, you fill it with concrete or something. It might get created down the road. Okay. And uh, do you think it will help to have some uh, beams? Uh, wait, um, for mechanical point of view, I don't think it's a very rigid body. Uh, as, as far as I remember from mechanics lectures, you need some kind of uh, tri triangular structure. Uh, uh, I mean, it depends how much you need, but I mean, it's the, the real answer to that comes from the analysis of you actually do that simulation. You can do that in FreeCAD uh, for now. Yeah, I mean, triangulation would make it make it stronger, but also the what we have already is a space frame, which is a strong, strong design. But yes, it doesn't does not have the triangulation, which would make it stronger. Not important for three D printing, though. So uh, the whole point was for milling anything with force. Yeah, the PVC is, is going to be much weaker than the metal. The metal that's a very solid, pretty solid structure. Yeah, uh -huh. and it's made of. You can say you can think of it as angles. Uh, it's not lines, it's actually angles. It's like taking angle irons. Uh, so it's, there's details there. Um, but anyway, um, for the 3D printer, PVC is all good. But we're also going to test how good that is. I mean, because uh, we, Jonathan, John, talking, we were talking about if we find that the Three quarter inch PVC does not work. We can go to one inch, for example, as a stronger one. Or you could even do something like pour concrete inside the tubes. Just drill a hole and fill it with something, some kind of a I, thing. I, I thought the, uh, the printer, the PVC printer, we have already used one inch pipe. Oh, uh, that one. I actually, I think the one that I, the one I built here, that was three quarter actually. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, that was three quarter. But uh, but we think that one works. We we haven't tested it fully, but initial prints were looking good. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. You just gotta you know you look at it. You you really shake it down to see what's what's going on, and then make decisions based on that once we build it. Okay, yeah. I have some. Uh problems to, to get this uh, corner fittings. Okay, um, well they have it on uh, Amazon. Do you have... Yes, Amazon I have wrote already that it's very expensive there. For the corner fittings? Yes, uh, they, they will uh, sh uh, ship them from USA mm. to Germany. It's uh, yeah. very expensive. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, the other thing to do is, is 3D print them. <laughs> is another way to go. Uh, yeah, I, I, wrote to, I wrote it uh, to my uh, to my log. It would cost a six, uh, no, 36 a euro for four corners. 
Yeah. I think it's very expensive. Yeah, it's a little expensive, yeah. So, uh, being in Germany a couple of times, uh, yeah, Tomb doesn't have them, or yeah, really? those kind of hardware stores? Uh, uh, no, no I, I could not find the uh, hardware stores. Yeah, I remember I, I did a deployment out in Frankfurt uh, Airport, I was always looking around for stuff, and yeah, I mean, you know, in the U.S. at Home Depot, you don't really have corners that often. Um, you go to other places, like local hardware stores don't have it. But uh, I, you might be able to get away. Uh, one thing I did do, did see sometimes, is uh, metal uh, corners. Kind of with, you can weld those together and kind of jury rig stuff. There's some creative things you can do. Even with PVC, I mean, you could always uh, just get a 90 degree and then, um, you know, with a saw cut a piece and then epoxy another piece together and kind of rig stuff. It's not pretty, but something to do to make it work, maybe. Yeah, you might be able to jerry rig it. Yeah, cut off, uh, you know, put some sharpie lines on it, and cut out the Dremel or something. I, have, uh, I, uh, I found some on uh, AliExpress. They will ship them. Oh yeah, that's a good site. Uh, from uh, China, within 60 days. Um, but I'm not, not sure about the quality. Is it the, uh, how how important is it that they, uh, the corners are really, really precise? I mean, it depends that if you can find the PVC that fits in it, but it shouldn't be super important. You just got to find the pipe that works. But then the other, other part is if you're going to find yourself a hacker space around where you are to potentially do some 3D printing, and that, those things can be printed as well. So that's another thing to consider as a possibility. Any chance near Mannheim in Germany? Mannheim? Yeah. Is that close to you? Oh, I'm, I'm so bad in geography. It's in southern, southwest, western part of Germany. Oh, then it's far away. I'm in northern Germany. Oh, okay. Okay. I can I can look in to see what uh, is available. I have a, a, a very close friend who has a construction company in Germany, so you probably know where you can get stuff like that. Oh, oh very nice. Uh, maybe if you email me the list of all the things you're looking for, I can I can uh, forward it to him. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. It's really far away from, from me. I'm just so thinking that that's where he's based, so if, if he knows like actual stores where you can go and get all these things then but yeah, maybe maybe there's the secret, chain stores uh, corner store yeah so. exactly <laughs> but maybe maybe there's chain stores that are that he would know about that would also be available where you are or something like that mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this actually more, more could be possible uh, because uh, even prices for from normal people retail prices and prices for uh, craft uh, how do you call it craftsman uh, professionals, yeah, are, are different. Yeah, um, it could be uh, maybe uh, he has uh, better access to to start. Well, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, what, uh, the pipe size, what should I take? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's three quarter or one inch. I mean, if we do. I mean, let's do. I think the three quarter would be pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably gonna start out with uh, three quarters. This material is cheaper. Yeah. And, uh, made only one inch, but I'm, I'm gonna start with three quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Martin, I just uh, realized who, we had another guy in our group a while ago who was very active, who was also in northern Germany. Yeah, that was. That was Oliver. Oh yeah, Oliver so might know. So probably know that for sure. Oh yeah. Do you have Oliver's email? Yeah, you do. 
Yeah, I can I can look it up. Ruslan, you I give it to you, right? I, I thought you you sent me an email and put me in CC. Yeah, yeah. Email him. Um, he'd be actually a very good guy to ask about that. I tried to contact the, um, the German branch of uh, open source ecology, but right. Yeah, no that's, reply. That's Oliver. That's Oliver. <laughs> he, he's he's the guy who does a lot of that stuff. There. And he's in northern Germany too, so he's in your area. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe he's even my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. B basically, I think that it looks like uh, OSE Germany is not very active. It's right. Euphemism for dead. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, exactly. Yeah, so find out about those parts. Work with Oliver. And. Uh, yeah, continue on that. Are you thinking of uh, how much time do you think you're going to spend more on a, on a workbench? How long do you think it will take for you to get to the next steps? Um, it depends on what do you mean. Uh, well, what should I uh, develop there? Well, as far as a, a workbench, so you said you're interested in making that an automated creation of the frame. How long would that take? I suppose uh, several months. It's uh, not only programming, but oh, yeah? it's a little bit uh, uh, geometry. And I uh -huh. need to think about how I would describe, for example, elbow and uh, all the mm -hmm. geometric manipulation. Not that it, it's uh, simple mathematics, but uh, to, to make a good program from it will uh, take time. And I also looked at Flamingo. Mm -hmm. some ideas from there. Uh, they, uh, the author use this the same license. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Should not be a problem. Okay. So um, as far as managing the time between building the three D printer and, and this, I mean how what do you want to do then? I will continue to work on uh, on the work page, uh, mm -hmm. even if I will uh, do uh, during I will wait for for the parts. Yeah. For the three D print, printer, and uh, it, it's also easier for me to program than to uh, to do all the mechanic stuff now. Okay. Now. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Just continue on. Yeah. That'll be that'll be very good to. To get that, and even in uh, just the basic drag and drop, click and drop, that's yeah, that's still very need, useful. Need, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, card drawing uh, for my printer. Right. I, so I, 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 I can uh, develop uh, first ma uh, macros to uh, to make the frame, for example, and then to build the frame. Right, right. So John is working on, on his next goal is to get the the PVC frame version into FreeCAD. So you guys should coordinate with uh, any tasks on that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Wait, um, I also... Do you also develop... Uh, uh, Workbench? No, 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 no. He's not working on a workbench. He's he's working just just putting the design into FreeCAD. I'm I'm rendering in FreeCAD a 12-inch version of a PVC uh, printer, and then I'm also building that. Right. Okay. I already have macros to automatically create the PVC frame, but it's not uh, very user-friendly. I might figure it out. But Python familiar, so yeah, I mean, it's cool you have a parametric uh, design to let people scale their printers. That's a cool feature for down the road, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, I'll get I'll along with just a normal, I mean, that you have the primitives that pretty put me way ahead. Yeah. Here. I should do this this week, maybe. Okay, uh, then uh, we should uh, work, work together. Yep. Uh, 
Um, yep. Okay. Can you? Okay. I will try to contact you with, uh, over email, and then we'll probably we don't need to wait until we develop our meeting. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, you got okay. you got his email. You got each other's emails, or no? John, you want to type it in for? Yeah, we should. I think send some stuff to each other online. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So, so you have the macro that does the frame already. Uh, to, at what state of development is that? I mean, it's is it usable right now that it will create the frame automatically? Okay, but you said it, in order to get that into a workbench into FreeCAD, there will be quite a bit more work. Is that so? Just to for the frame? No, for the frame I will need need couple of hours, and you will just select. Uh, I'm going to do some drop down menus. You select yeah, the pipe, yeah, 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 and you select uh, the corner type and uh, dimensions. Click OK, and you you get your yeah. frame. I thought you, we were talking about more operative uh, way, uh, version of workbench when you can uh, rotate stuff on some on an easy way and uh, connect things. Yeah, and no, I wasn't what, even uh, talking about that. I was asking just about the the workbench for the frame itself. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. This week. Okay, okay. So that's that's going to be quick. Okay, so you were talking about a few months for the fuller workbench, but yeah, that's yes. Um, okay, okay. That that makes more sense. But yes, yeah, so so you can work on a 3D printer and the uh, the programming and whenever you don't have the 3D printer build work happening, you can maybe contribute some to the workbench and yeah, I mean, if we could ha have that if we could do that, the, the goal there is that people can design their own variations. Like if they want to change or tweak sizes for different, different sizes and shapes, they can do that, including much larger ones. Because uh, of uh, different standards, for example, I, I will not uh, look for uh, three, three quarter inch pipes. Uh, it's for me, it's easier to look for uh, metric. But do you know that already? Uh, you know that, or you're guessing that? Because it might be that metric is also less, uh, just imperial, maybe the one that you have easy access to. I, do, I just don't know. No, no, I already did the research. Okay. I looked for different... Uh, right, so, so that would have to be the variation in there. Uh, can you make it, can you allow it to do both? Both versions. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that would be that would be the optimal you just thing. Just uh, basically select two parts and yeah. uh, dimensions of the frame, and then the macro uh, fit everything um, together. Yeah. Yep. 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 That sounds good. Okay, well let's let's move on here. So, so yeah, yeah, that's that's good stuff, and we're getting close to that that workbench and getting that all much more automated for people to use. All right, well, good job. So we'll move on to the uh, to Abe. Abe, do you have s some new new progress on? Uh, Power cubes. Yes. Uh, Paste some stuff there. I think I'll, I'll share my, well, maybe my CAD window. Okay. Uh, let's see. More of the page. Um, well, yeah. Uh, let's see. I have a uh, document as well. I, I did a. Uh, we're going to have a lot of details from our meeting the other day uh, to work on on the power cube for fittings and things. So I, I started referencing a ball valve from some 
updated on that. I got that done for, I got two of those, three quarter and one inch, and I think we need the one inch really. But uh, and I, I was looking too at the, let's see, the power cubes and how they fit on the live track because it's trying to get the pump, uh, the first stage pump detailed or the fittings uh, and um, it it looks like uh, the information on the page I was just noticing one thing is it doesn't show let's see it doesn't specifically say which side right and left uh, the inlet and outlet ports are on because they're two different sizes so that might be a helpful detail to, to figure out because uh, I need to uh, finish that pump so that um, I, I, I keep thinking close on the frame, but it's it's uh, it, I think it needs a lot more adjustment just because I, I I made some hook points on the small one, and there I was seeing how those might fit on so that they can be hoisted, you know, hoisted onto the tractor and all that because that that all kind of you know interconnects with that. Let me see if I can pull up the. It is going to be kind of hard to fit these cubes on the large tractor, and I was looking at how that uh, might go together. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it looks like it's going to be hard to put those up there and, and mount them. And I'm trying to figure out a way to... Oh, it's slow, but okay. Um, yeah, okay, so there's a lot of details. Oh, let's see how they get on there. One, two, three, four... Well, they don't fit is the problem. This, uh, uh, they're going to, I don't know, go in a different pattern on this life track because the space between the frame and the back is just a bit more narrow. And I, actually, mm-hmm. I was wondering, I was going to think of thinking, well, I can narrow the frame of the power cube more. But the only thing, what, what's keeping me from doing that is actually the cooler. So we're putting the cooler right there in front of the um, the air vent. Hopefully, it's going to get some air, and it's it's the widest pump. It's wider than the engine, so um, it's it's kind of what's keeping the cube an inch or two, maybe or two inches wider than than uh, it would be ideal, but. And of course, we have a lot of fitting to fit in the inlet on the one with the tank, but it, it could be bigger. It could actually be wider. It's these other cubes that go underneath the larger cube that are uh, just, if they could be narrow, it would be not. But I don't, I don't see a way. I don't see if there's a way to turn the cooler upright, maybe. But I, I think that gets in the way as far as the plumbing. So on the small cube. It just looks like the best way to put the cooler is at the bottom where it is. And uh, I don't know, that's going to keep the cube fairly wide. Mm-hmm. Cube. So that, that kind of makes it hard to fit them, two of them, in between the, the rails on the back of the tractor there. What's so, the space we have right now um, for the width? Uh... 32 inches between the frame there okay. um, and the cat. Actually, I don't think I probably didn't upload this file. 32 inches on the back of the tractor. And the cube is, uh, is it small? Is it 20? I think it's 20. And the, that cooler is, is the thing that's keeping it two, two and a half inches wider than the engine itself. So. But I, if it was turned in a different direction, then the hoses that go to the cooler probably would be hard to route around the engine. I just don't see, I, I, I don't know that the hose could be routed that well around the engine that way if the cooler was turned a different direction. So, and it, you, you were saying too, you don't have any 90s uh, elbows that way. Uh, hose is kind of a, a sweeping turn 
wherever we have to turn. Of course, actually, in general, that's kind of difficult around the engine from that cooler. Either way, well, actually, right now, there's no space at the ends around the engine that would probably run the hoses. Yeah, beside. Oh, uh, that's on the water. I think that the hoses would fit around the side and not as well if it was turned a different direction. So I, I, I don't think we can narrow the cube that way unless it's just a different way to plumb it. the other way is to consider stacking them um, let's see one in front of the other and, but then there's not a lot of frame let's see on the back of the tractor kind of stack the smaller cubes in front of each other plus that limits plus that limits access um, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> So the yeah, cube is 20 by 20 right now? It is, it is 20, see I measured it earlier, I think it's close to 20 inches cubed, well, it's probably a little bit over 20 in some dimensions because, uh, let's see if the way, I think I assembled the, the frame pieces, so it might be like 20 and a quarter one direction. Which yep. I, I may um, reassemble that differently. Actually, I think I got it assembled non-symmetrically, and I, I didn't mean to do that. I guess it's because I had to edit, to add some of these details. So it's not as symmetric uh, on those parts as it was to begin with. So I may change that again, I think, because I think we want it to see and see cut these pieces so that they're fairly the matter um, I don't know right if it is. as far as the the file just to make sure you're using the same so what I pasted in the chat is that the file you're using for life track currently just making sure uh, we're on the same page let's see the, yeah, yeah I had that live track file and I guess I put I started to put some cubes in there I, I need to well I need to upload that or, or update Mm -hmm. That I guess, but um, yeah, I, I, I didn't upload cubes of one with cubes. I think I simplified it. Yeah, so that wasn't up to date. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the, I'm gonna keep working on the, the details for the plumbing parts mostly because I can do a lot of that, but details of how the frame and how the cubes are going to go on the tractor kind of affects some of the, the frame design I see. so that's be part of that uh, it, 
it may make it a little harder to re to design them exactly. Uh, I keep changing frame more than expected just to accommodate some of these, these other parts, and that that's okay. I think I may actually have to... I don't know if I actually need to enlarge the, the main cube frame with the tank just to get all the fittings in. I mean, I can put them in between in different spots, but kind of like we are having space between the fittings to make it easy to weld, plus getting them low and high enough and, that, and so on. I think with the ball valves, about that. Once we get the ball valves in, they might tend to be in the way of each other. It might have to stagger. Uh, yeah. Okay. Stagger the, the fittings up and down and so on. Okay. So there's a yeah. So let me uh, let me interject there. There's going to be a lot of issues in terms of. I mean, there is no s simple answer right now. We're going to have to take a look at exactly how each particular fitting is routed. So that's going to have to be some careful planning there. So. We really need to look at this very carefully. Would you mind then, um, as the next step, uploading uh, your your current file? And then I um, think what we want to do is uh, I should review that and then just look at that in detail. Because yeah, there is no there is no quick answer here. We just just have to really look at it and just just really beat it down. And pretty much, maybe just draw out simple, uh, like proposed pathways, and we probably have to go through several pathways until we we end up optimizing everything. I can tell you, like doing the biodigester thing, it, the the routing, you know, it takes it just takes time, especially when uh, it's. I mean, it's not super easy to draw tubing in FreeCAD either. So, uh, but we have to do we have to model that a little bit. Like uh, I don't know, maybe if you can continue now by yeah I mean first of all upload what you have but but then the next step would be to to do some like basic simple models like okay this hose is gonna turn left or this one is gonna turn right and just start to draw that that in just a little bit and then we can keep keep massaging that until that that all fits yeah yeah the, the model from the live track I just kind of did that to a little bit and yeah there's not enough detail in there to tell plus <laughs> i, I yeah. think that the cubes are gonna have to change in size uh quite a bit i'm gonna assemble them differently to make them more symmetric again so the, yeah the, there's still changes on the pump and so on so i can change the size of the cubes a little bit it's unfortunately i just don't see a way to narrow the smaller cubes uh mm -hmm. by turning that I mean, cooler so but I mean, what you have right now, it does fit. What is the issue? Fit? Yeah. Is, um, is there an issue there with fitting? Because I mean, they okay. appear to fit, right? Oh. Um, the, okay. This, yeah, I'm trying to upload this, this file too. Um, they don't fit. The bottom two fit. But the ones on top of that, of course, don't quite fit between there. So maybe they need to go... Wait, why don't the top uh, ones fit? Because the yeah, what's in a way? Oh yeah, the oh yeah, the me. those arms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. They don't quite fit the arms, which is why I was kind of trying to wish mm -hmm. I could narrow those smaller cubes a little bit. But they're um, let's see, where's, yeah, yeah. They they're quite a bit wider, and I don't I don't know if I can narrow them enough. I'd have to do a measurement. Um, well, I can do right, that. right. If they go down to nine, I mean, if I got them eighteen inches wide instead of twenty, it, you know, it still wouldn't fit. So, yeah. So I don't okay. Think Let me take a look at you. that um, in more detail. I can't really. I gotta study the the design more carefully. And yeah. to go around the engine to the cooler in the front there and that looks like the current position looks like the best position on the one that's um, the, on the small cube or or the large cube as well so 
just we need that width to have enough space. Plus, I keep thinking well, I'm in a narrow cube or the cube make it more shorter and smaller, but the reality is too that's gonna eventually make it really hard to assemble or work on. Right. And things like that. So there's yeah. there's just a certain size that we need to for accessibility and usability. Uh, right. And I think twenty inch is about right. I, so I think we're just gonna have to figure out a different way to mount them on the tractor. That's yeah. Uh, they can't they can't really the top bottom two can go side by side, but the ones on top of that will have to be. Yeah. In front of those, or I mean, you don't want to go too high either, because boy, I, I can see how that that large cube that's going to be up at the top lets you know. I'm not sure how many feet up that was. I hoist it up more than several feet, right? So it's like you need another yeah yeah another tractor just lift it up there. Um, oh, I think I measured 80 huh. inches. Is that 80? Okay. 80 Okay, yeah. Let me take a look at that in more detail. I I can't really comment. I'll I'll take a look at that, and then get back to you on that to see what what we can do on that. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So um, there are gonna be a yeah, just uh, every like we have to account for every host because you can't like. Uh, you know, do this and then find that some hose is going the wrong way and it's in the way of something. So a lot of little details to look at. But let me see. Um, as far as uh, just to wrap up the meeting here, yeah, so we'll have to, I'll definitely get back to you on that and see where we go on that because we might just have to step a little back and, and rethink something. So, okay, let's move on to, to John real quick. John, are you still there? No, I think John, uh, yeah, John, you're still there. Um, yeah, so you're, you're moving along and do you have any, any blocks or anything that we need to address right now or you're, you're good to go for now? Yeah, John, uh, we can't hear you if you, if you're talking. But it looks like looks like you're pretty good to go on. Um, yeah, FreeCAD work designing the D3D and and um, before we build the PVC version to optimize all the fit, we gotta cat it up and do that. And it's D3D, not 3D3. So just for your reference, you keep on using 3D3. It's D3D for Distributive Enterprise 3D Printer. Um, but that looks good. Okay, so that looks like everybody's covered for now. And um, yeah, so to summarize, I think we're we're good to go. Uh, let's see, Lex. Let's see, Lex. You still there? No, Lex. Lex dropped off. Um, so yeah, main things. Uh, continue working. On the different projects, uh, I have to take a look at the the tractor fit because that's that's going to be important. On the on the map, it's the roadmap for this year here. The tractor is uh, uh, definitely important, but we're going to get that cut with a CNC torch table. So so that's the shakedown coming up uh, on my side here, just to take the work we had from yet from last year and and just really finalize it. And we're, we did a lot last year, and I think we're, we'll be pretty good. For that, um, let's see. Anything else? I think we're pretty good for now. So, uh, excuse me. yep. I just Go ahead. Uh, uh, wrote the mail to Oliver. Yep. And I looked uh, to uh, to Wiki of Open Source Ecology Germany. Yep. And there are activities, and this is a good sign. So I hope. Uh, I, I can contact uh, the German group and if they are active, maybe uh, we can work together. Yeah. I hope. It would, it would be great to have some uh, local group too. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. Depends what they're doing. 
That sounds good. Okay, so let's let's wrap it up for here. I got to get going myself, and um, called off for next time till next Tuesday, and we'll just continue working on uh, on uh, different parts. Email me if you've got any questions, and we'll otherwise be in touch on the email. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone, and good meeting, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.